that's what I've earned. That's what I've been struggling for all these years in the end to be able to do what I want to do without a lot of corporate but interference and craziness. And, you know, and I, I felt strongly enough about it to where I dedicated myself to getting to a point where I could be independent enough to not have to, you know, go down the path of compromise for the sake of somebody who isn't really that interested in what you're doing anyway. Who is to blame for the proliferation of watered-down movies and shows? The lowest common denominator problem. Who tramples writers' and directors' visions with reshoots and edits? If you watched parts one and two of the series, you know the answer to the preceding questions is... Corporate Studio Executives. I placed a link to parts one and two in the description. Welcome to Galactic Initiative. I'm your host, Jeff. The PG-13 epoch is one of mediocrity. Since 2001, PG-13 films have constituted over 50% of the North American movie market. Box office receipts show double the gross revenue for PG-13 in comparison to R. And the advantage is obvious, more potential customers. But the disadvantage is also obvious, fewer intelligent, mature narratives. Contemporary cinema is a YA version of past glories. PG-13 movies, despite the allowance of cursing, violence, and nudity, attempt to reach the lowest common denominator. I won't elaborate on LCD. You can puzzle out the meaning. Once again, the greed for more consumers satisfies almost none. Judging by the writing, the target market is preteens. Today, productions like The Terminator, Alien, Jaws, Gladiator, The Shawshank Redemption, The Godfather, Schindler's List, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, and The Matrix would have been diluted to reach larger audiences for quarterly earnings. Recall the greatness of those films and all that would have been lost if they'd been compromised. In the past, I've argued about the target market for George Lucas's Star Wars. The oft-repeated misunderstanding Star Wars is for kids breaks down under scrutiny. Its themes resonate with a wide range of viewers, but many are fully accessible only to adults. The slide from democracy to autocracy, and the possessiveness of intimate relationships, for example. Lucasfilms aren't designed for the lowest common denominator, yet they are comprehensible by children. Would the original Star Wars have changed cinematic history if geared to preteens? Hmm. I mean, gotta remember in those days, even Star Wars was experimental. Even Star Wars was something that studios, you know, a couple studios turned it down. Uh, Alan Ladd Jr., when he said, gave me the go ahead, he said, look, I don't understand this script. I don't understand your movie, but I think you're a talented guy, and whatever you do is okay with me. Man, that's, yeah. a, that's a hell of an executive, isn't it? That's a great executive. That's somebody who says, I'm going to invest in talent. I'm not going to invest in this project. Right. I'm going to invest in somebody that I believe in. And he reaped the rewards of that. And he had to fight the board and everybody else because nobody else believed in it or understood it. Quality entertainment doesn't conform to dividend forecasts, but the latter will follow if the former is given precedence. This fact is often lost on studio executives who prioritize their bonuses and shareholder value over artistry. Their approach is the antithesis of effective business management. Joseph Bauer and Lynn Payne of Harvard Business School view shareholder value as the error at the heart of corporate leadership, flawed in its assumptions, confused as a matter of law, and damaging in practice. The key is customer value. Management guru Peter Drucker wrote, What a business thinks it produces is not of first importance. What the customers think they are buying, what they consider value, is decisive. It determines what a business is, what it produces, and whether it will prosper. Drucker defined leadership as the lifting of a person's vision to higher sights and the raising of a person's performance to a higher standard. Board members' insistence on PG-13 for profit frustrates writers and directors' visions and lowers standards. Films produced for the lowest common denominator rarely, if ever, become classics that deliver broadcast, streaming, and merchandise sales over decades. They're not fondly remembered or recommended from generation to generation. Promises of support and artistic integrity are often broken for reshoots and edits mandated by executives outside the creative process. It's a bit like taking your auto to the shop for repairs, haggling over the estimate, standing at the mechanic's shoulder, 
giving unsolicited advice mixed with vague encouragement, and just prior to completion, overhauling the work because you don't understand it and believe you can do better. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. Check out Galactic Initiative for all things Star Wars. Galactic Initiative is not authorized or endorsed by Lucasfilm Limited. The name Star Wars and all related materials are registered trademarks of Lucasfilm Limited, a subsidiary of the Walt Disney Company, all rights reserved. Galactic Initiative is a registered trademark and other product and company names are trademarks of their respective holders. Use does not imply affiliation or endorsement.